first of all, we're recording here. Okay. And now uh, let me see here. Uh, I have to, uh, how do I do? Oh, there we go. Okay. I forget how I do things. I'm, I'm getting too old for this. Okay. Here we go. We're up and running on uh, on Facebook. Uh, I haven't done, I didn't do a show last night. Now I'm not doing a show tonight. This is not a, an official show. This as you see, says Alex Bennett special or whatever. Um, I wasn't going to do any kind of show tonight, but then this son of a bitch writes me and says, ah, come on, let's just you and I and Kevin. And, you know, we get together on a, on Saturday nights and uh, talk with each other. And it's a nice conversation. And I thought I'd do maybe, a, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever I feel like tonight. And I want to explain why I wasn't on last night, why I'm not on tonight, and why I am considering not going on at all, you know, um, except for the Monday show I like doing. I love doing the Monday show. So that will that will continue to be. And the next time I'll be on maybe is Wednesday, you know, but – the other night I did a show and it wasn't bad, you know, and Phil was on it, but uh, it wasn't bad anyway. Uh, and I was kind of uh, alive and active and, and so on. And then after the show was over, I went to see how many people watched and it was p pathetically low. But sometimes that improves as the day goes on because people watch the rebroadcast, right? Mm -hmm. No such luck. By the next morning, I had under 100 people who had looked at that program. And that kind of got to me because I, I really just said, look, you know, I mean, at what level do I say this is not worth doing anymore? OK, and uh, I decided it was not worth doing. Uh, and I decided that on uh, Friday, uh, Saturday, Thursday, rather, I wasn't going to do a show. And I, I was planning on maybe doing a show tonight, but then something happened last night. Every night, almost every night, I'd say out of the last maybe seven nights that Jack Bishop has been back, five of those nights, he has had one problem after another. Okay. Now he's been doing this for what, five years or something. He should know how to do it, but apparently he doesn't know how to do it. So. Uh, yesterday, I'm figuring, you know, I'm the dude and I'm not going to work. I'm just going to go into my guest room, watch some stuff I want to watch, maybe play a few of my video games, but maybe not even do that because that's exhausting, believe it or not. Uh, if it were a job, it would be considered hard labor. Um, and I decided that I would just, do, you know, and then I come back tonight. But then I get a call at like, 11.30 my time. Alex, it's Jack. I can't get on to the, the server. We have a thing he's got to do here by coming on using a thing called remote PC and bringing on. He says, I can't get remote PC working. So I can't work the, this, the, the stream. And I'm talking with him. Okay, now let's do this and let's do that. And all of a sudden I'm getting Ajita and, I'm get, and he is... <laughs> He is maybe the worst person you could possibly have to do technical stuff with. Because you, you say to him, click on the link, and he doesn't know what to click. You know, so anyway, it was just, it was, it was ghastly. And I was at my wits end last night. And I wanted to take the night off just to kind of reconnoiter and kind of get my juices flowing again. And then I went, I needed another day's of rest, you know. So then I decided I wasn't going to do a show tonight, and I'm not doing one tonight. If you go over to YouTube, it's not there. This may wind up on YouTube, but uh, it's not there. Uh, and we're not doing it live on the uh, on the audio stream or anything like that. It's just right here on Facebook, and it's with Kevin, and it's with um, Josh. Uh, and uh, these are some people who I have a good time with when I sit around and talk about stuff. But uh, they implored me, both of them in their own little way, to do something tonight. You know, you, you Josh, said, why don't you do what we do on weekends? Just get us together and talk. You know, I figured out oh, that'd be nice. You know, I, don't. Never, I never get depressed doing that. 
and Kevin is part of that component. He was writing, oh, geez, and I got home just to be on your show tonight. <laughs> a way to guilt me into this, Kevin. <laughs> so Kevin guilted me into it. So uh, here job. I am. Well, here we are. And, and I don't care if nobody's watching, okay? Because I didn't do anything to make them watch or to even expect to have them watch. But uh, let me just make sure we're on and everything. Yeah, there we are. We're we're up and running. Uh, and uh, somebody wrote, uh, no, nobody wrote anything. Now, you know, also, um, wait a minute, now playing. Hold on a second. Let me just bring this back up again and see what, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so anyway, um, so then the, the next day, you know, uh, Friday, I, today, I went to see how many people, you know, maybe questioned where I was. Between all the sources that I have, whether it's email or uh, 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 Facebook uh, Messenger or uh, uh, a post on my Facebook page, a total of three people wondered where the hell I was. <laughs> so, you know, that was it. Well I think more wandered where they just didn't write you, you know, so. Well, uh, you know, I mean, it's like, I think I'm just, it, the whole thing is just taken for granted too much. And, you know, mm. I'm, I'm just around. I'm the old guy who's sitting around doing something, you know. Well, I mean, I don't see it that way. I mean, we will, we'll have some good conversation tonight, but, um, you know, but what I said earlier, you know, and you know, that I said I would say on air because I, I meant it, you know, was that, you know, I remember when you were on Sirius, and this isn't one of those, oh, I remember when you were on this station, Alex? No, but I just mean, during that time, you know, I had a, I had a job that uh, <laughs> I just, I fucking hated it. I mean, I couldn't stand it. And, yeah. you know, your, uh, your show that you did on Sirius for, I mean, for years during that job was, it helped me get through the day. Yeah. I mean, it really did. It was the highlight of, of the day, really. I mean, I, I you used must to have had a pretty pitiful life if that was the case. Well, it was pretty yeah. bad to be honest with you. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, look, when you're just like stuck in a career that you completely cannot stand, mm -hmm. that affects your life pretty bad, right? You know, so but that was the best part of the day. I mean, because it was uh, you know, you you talked about things that I cared about which was politics a lot but you know there was a lot of you know funny shit mixed in you know i mean with albert and then you know with christine and with everybody you know and i mean just just you know the silliness and stuff just the right amount you know well, well i'll tell you how, tell you how that life. mess came to be uh they I, I was finally able to get them to agree to give me a shift at uh at uh, sirius xm or sirius cool. at the time Right. Because I offered to work for free. <laughs> I offered to work for free. And and I said, all I want is you let me have all the advertising inventory. And if I can go out and sell some time to people, so be it. And then I will take that money as my salary. <laughs> well, after about three months, they felt very guilty about that arrangement. Yeah. And they started paying me. Um. And I uh, I was amazed actually that that, uh, that they, they they gave me as much money as I they did. I, they yeah. asked me how much I wanted, and I'd been out of work for a while. I was desperate to get back on the air, so I lowballed it rather than highballed it, and I lowballed it at uh, seventy five thousand dollars a year. Hmm. Okay? And immediately, what they came back and said was, "Well, seventy five thousand a year. Nah, how about a hundred? Yeah. Now, when have you ever gone in and given a, a boss a price yeah. and they actually went higher on it? Right. Yeah. yeah right. These were some yeah. pretty good people who were there at the time. That's at the point. time. Right. Yeah. 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 But I mean, that anyway, anyway, they said, uh, we want to put you on our political channel, left channel. And I went, yeah, well, I know I'm a lefty and I have leftist <laughs> politics, but yeah. I, you know, that's not the kind of show I do. I do an entertainment show. They said, oh, go do an entertainment show. Just make sure there's a little bit of politics mixed in with it. 
Yeah. And so that's what the show was until, of course, right. at the end when they finally fired me because it wasn't political enough. You know, but the deal I wanted to actually go on a channel they had called, uh, uh, I think it was just called the Serious Channel or something like that. It was yeah. it was just an entertainment channel. Yeah, and they had stars, I think. It I was think it was called. stars. That was the one they yeah. wanted to have me. I on. think that's that's I where they to. moved uh, Lynn Samuels at the end, I think, if I remember right. So, you know, I, but, you know I mean, because if I had to do nothing but politics, I'd blow my brains out. <laughs> you know, that's right. I mean, I, I can get that. I mean, yeah, that's you know, every day. I mean, but that 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 was, uh, you know, what helped pass the time you know, during the, during the day. And I used to listen to Sirius left most of the day. Um, but there were parts of that channel that I didn't care for. Mm -hmm. So I would have to kind of flip around, but you know, those couple hours that you were on, and then I think Lynn was on before you or after you, mm -hmm. and then I, find, I found her show, you know, I liked it. I mean, I didn't, your show that you had was the show that I always listened to was my, my favorite one. Her show was okay most of the time because she would she would say, you know, she funny was crazy. Shit. Her, she, you're yeah. right, you know, her bitching and moaning would get sort of funny at times, you know. I mean it so it was a good, a pretty good, pretty good couple hours, you know. And that look, that's what helps people, you know, get through the day. So I mean, I, I think that you've helped a lot of people, you know, have better days. I mean, uh, I, I guess is, you know, uh, to me, that's about the nicest thing I could tell somebody. I mean, and instead well, of, that's very, that's very uh, nice of you to say, I mean, uh, you know, you know, Oh, your show was great or this. I mean, no, it did. Your show was something that people. Well, you know, know I always said, I, I'll tell you when I was a, when I was a kid, uh, I, uh, I got a girl pregnant, a <laughs> girlfriend pregnant. And she decided that, you know, there's the old story about, you know, a guy would get a woman pregnant and he'd leave town. In my yes. case, I got a girl pregnant and she left town, <laughs> but uh, she didn't, I, I wanted to marry her. I wanted, and she, she didn't want that. She was going to give the kid away. And the night yeah. that I found all that out, I was about as depressed as you could possibly be. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know that I would have committed suicide because I'm too much of a coward to commit suicide, but I, 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 it was, it, it's one of those kind of things where the pain follows you wherever you go, you know, cool. you know those feelings, you probably, we all had them at one right. time or another. And I was driving past the Marin movie theater in Sausalito. And, uh, there was a Jerry Lewis movie playing. I think I, I used to think it was, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. And I thought it was one thing, but I think it turned out that it was Cinderfella which is not one of Jerry Lewis's best movies. And while I had a certain like, like, liking of, of, of Jerry Lewis, uh, he wasn't my favorite, okay? But I just had to do something. So I got out of the car and I paid for my ticket, you know, came in and I think the middle of the show, because that's the way movies were in those days. You walked in at any time. And then the most off said phrase in a movie theater was looking over to your friend and saying is this where we came in you know yeah uh, through and you wait you remember that they you know yeah. they didn't say you can't Roll go through, in that you'd wait, and then you'd huh? get to that part and then you get up and go yeah exactly so i went in i started watching this and i was just depressed as hell and after a while i found myself laughing and and this movie was giving me relief from the pain and it was then that I realized that, you know, I was on the right path. And my path was that I wanted to make people laugh. I wanted to make people feel good. I wanted to make people take people away from a uh, anguishing situation for a moment and maybe give them a sense, a certain relief in being able to make them laugh. Yeah. And, and that kind of became my, my, my mission when I went into radio. Was that that entire thinking that that there's nothing wrong with be, with making people laugh? That in fact, sure. when they want to really cry, instead it may be the most radical act you can perform. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, sure. if you found that my show had a certain sense of humor and whatever, and it it it, it took you away from that horrible job you had, sure. then I served my function. 
No, you did. And and the and so I guess the overall point of that was mm-hmm. that to me, that still hasn't stopped. So I cannot call every night because of my work schedule. Right. But Patrick and Kevin will tell you that I, I still send something out every, you know, Friday at four or five or whatever when I've got cleaned up for the night and I've come to sit down and I've, you know, joke around, hey, you know what day it is, you know, it's Friday. Yeah. You know, I, so yeah. I, I sit here and do whatever for a few hours, but I look forward to the 1030. You but know, you know that's one of the reasons comes I, back on. You know, I, I, lately I felt tired, tired a lot. Mm-hmm. I, I've simply, I suddenly realized it has a lot to do with medicine I've been taking. Yeah. And I'm trying to modify that and figure out exactly what it is that's doing it. But uh, I, you know, there are times I've been too tired to do a show. And the reason I do the show is for the people who are on it. Um, uh, by the way, I'm going to ask you, there's a guy by the name of, uh, who lives up in uh, uh, Canada. And his name is Mike Chisholm. And he calls the Monday show. Does a yep. thing called the Letterman podcast. Do you mind if he joins us? He's a good sure. guy. That's He's a good. good guy. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I I guess he's in town right now. Hey. Yes. Hello. Uh, hello. You there, Mike. Mike, can you hear me? Look, it's hey, man. Wherever he is. Yeah. Where are you? You're here in New York, aren't you? I'm on the Upper West Slide, wandering around, and I'm a little tipsy. I'm not going to lie. You're a little <laughs> what? I'm a little tipsy, Alex. You, he's you're drunk. drunk. I can't. I didn't get that because I'm not using earphones tonight. Let me put. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. I'm a little tipsy. I'm. Uh, I'm walking tipsy. around. The... Oh, tipsy. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. I just went out. I just went out for dinner with Steve O'Donnell, and uh, he uh, he he got me a little drunk and then sent me on my way. Yeah. Oh, New that's, York state of mind. that's what we do to Canadians down here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was fantastic. Yeah. I had a very Letterman day today. Okay, very good. He has a thing called the Letterman Podcast. Yeah, it's, it's a hobby. It's a hobby. Well, I told him it's a hobby. If he's not making money off of it, it's a hobby. <laughs> like, this is a hobby. Yes, sir. Where? So where are you in New York right now? What, what, look, at the, look at the street name. What is, what is it? What does it say? I'm wandering around the Upper uh, West Side. Uh, here, hold on. Let me cross the street. It is West 89th. Hmm. Uh, I'm on West 89th and Columbus. And Columbus. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's a nasty part of town. I think I'm safe. It's no, just, if you keep uh, coming north where we are, we can get you killed. <laughs> yeah. How, but, how is it going? What are we talking about tonight? Well, nothing, because I didn't do a show last night, because I was very depressed about sorry, the buddy. way things have been going with this show. And... Uh, now I have some friends on tonight, and we're doing this on uh, on Facebook, much like we do the Monday show. Yeah, we're not putting it out over YouTube uh, because I didn't want the general audience to find us, and I know that you probably <laughs> found us because you you noticed that we were up and running. I did. I was about to post a picture of me and Steve O'Donnell on the Facebook, and I saw that you were running, and so I thought, "Hey, I'm going to join on my buddy Alex." Yeah, what? exactly. But um, we were just talking about the ability of entertainment to help people in times of, yep. uh, you know, well, bad you times. Know. And, and that I often felt that, you know, that making people laugh is a very radical act when they otherwise want to cry. You know, so it's I'm, thinking taking, I'm thinking of taking a comedy tour to the Ukraine, you know, so. Both pursuits are therapeutic, laughing and crying. Mm-hmm. They're both releases. Well, also laughing and an orgasm are identical, I think. Yeah, I think if we're going to rate them, I would think orgasm is top of the top of the heap, no question. Well, here's then, something. Then, yeah. yeah, let me let me just say something to the other guys here too. Uh, I once had a theory about why I liked getting on a stage and then making people laugh. And I said it was the same reason why when I slept with a woman, the biggest joy I had was giving her, making her have an orgasm. Yeah. Now, you may say, hey, Alex, that's wonderful. Every woman would love you because you want to give her an orgasm. And I went, well, the reason is, is that 
it was my sense that I had power over somebody and I could regulate their emotions. <laughs> Does that make sense? And that when I got on the stage, I got the same feeling I had when I gave a woman an orgasm, when I made a whole audience laugh. I got that same thrill of just being able to manipulate the emotions of like a thousand people. It was, it's an amazing thrill. That's why I think comedians do it. I think they, they'll, every one of them will tell you when you get a large audience to laugh all at the same time, it's something you've said. Oh, so you're a sociopath. Yeah, I'm a sociopath. Yeah. <laughs> believe that my orgasms are better after I've given her an orgasm first and I know all the pressure's off and then things just feel so much better for me at that point. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, so uh, you're, you're down here and uh, you're a Canadian in New York. So I, I hope that soon as you're walking around, you get an official New York mugging. I think that would like uh, give you a sense of you know what's going on but anyway where were we what were we talking about if you want to go at any point by the way because i know you've got other things to do go ahead and do it you know not that i want you to go but uh, very courteous of you including the mugging thing thank you for that yeah 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 <laughs> i see his head swinging a lot more now yeah yeah right <laughs> yeah soon we'll see him running down the street you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we were just talking about, you know, what I talked about before that how that just uh it still continues now. You know, like I said, I I look forward to Friday, you know, not just, you know, the end of the day, the work day and coming home or whatever, but I do look I look, still look forward to the the shows, the programs that you do, you know, on Friday night. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, hop on here 10:30 or whatever and I can stay up till 12:30 or 1 and spend time listening to your program and stuff like that. i mean i look forward to it you know so well the, the, as i uh, said so you're, the still, you're still helping people get through their day trust well me. the I'm guilt the that. guilt that i had about not doing the show and the thing that mm -hmm. always made me go and do the show was the fact that there are a whole bunch of people that do call the show who like yourself like kevin like uh, brian for instance in fact you were the three people i actually wrote and said i'm not doing a show tonight so you wouldn't be, yes. you know, not in the loop. Uh, and Brian, uh, Jeff, who never says a word, but um, well, he lives yeah. to be on that show at night. He lives yeah. to call the show and be, be a, 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 in his case, a minor participant in it. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm enjoying this because I'm with friends, you know, right. and, yeah. and that, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. If, but uh, it, it, the the point is that I, I just don't, uh, you know, I don't know what to do with the show anymore. I don't know how to make it better. I don't know if I have the, the um, um, what do you call it, the energy to do it the way it should be done. You know, so I, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder uh, exactly what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I wanted to take a night off to figure that out and then. I had the Jack Bishop element that came into all of this, which, by the <laughs> way, let me finish the story. So he, I can't get him to be able to download this program, right? And so, so I said, just go do your show and then, you know, drop your show on, in my box, in the drop box. I don't want to sound sexual about this. And I said, do it, you know, in, in, your in the box, put it in the box. People will hear the show and you'll do the show and that's fine. And then tomorrow we'll figure this out. So I finally send him a, a, a link to my Dropbox where I put the program in that he wants to be able to use. Okay. And I wrote him and I said, just go to this place and use this link. And then there's a link and it takes him right to the Dropbox, his folder on the Dropbox. Right. And then he could just drag and drop that thing on there. I tried to do that for a half hour with him this morning. He couldn't figure out double click, right click or left click on the link. What's the link? And nothing's coming up. Well, you know, I've got it here and it's working beautifully, right? And I'm going, I, here it goes. Another, another day of agita where my heart is starting to pound 
and I'm starting to get cold sweats from this. And he says, oh, my, I think it was his, uh, his, his uh, what do you call it, uh, um, stepson or whatever, had walked in, and he knows how to run computers. So he puts him on the phone. I said, does he have that letter up there, the email up there? I said, yeah. I said, see the link? Yeah. Yeah, I said, click it. He clicks it. I said, what comes up? He says, oh, it's uh, it's your Facebook page. I said, now click on that program, and he cl- uh, rather your Dropbox. Uh, now click on the program, double clicks on the program. I said, what's happening? It says, it now says, uh, do you want to have the uh, Windows uh, install it? I said, click yes. He clicked yes. Anyway, I got him through it in, I think, a minute and a half. That's when you should have <laughs> had him install Zoom. <laughs> no, 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 no. The reason I haven't gone with Zoom with Jack is I got enough trouble with him just getting on the air. Yeah, and by yeah. the way, he's used for some reason, he's using the he's up well, he's up and running on this other machine. What time does he go on? He doesn't go on till doesn't go Not on for an hour. Hmm. Anyway, so he's up and he's I guess he's up and running, but I mean it. It just, I, after last night, after I went, started to lie down after it was all over, I just said, I can't, I just, I don't know if I can do this anymore. You know, well, just nothing this, wrong with, uh, nothing wrong with nights off sometimes. You well, know? I wanted to take the night off and then come back tonight and I, I, there was no way I could do it. You know, yeah. 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 People understand, you know, yeah. I think those, those, you know, aggravations or whatever frustrations or, Good to take a break from if you have to, but well, you, you know, know, I, you know I, I, okay. yeah. I'm the cook and bottle washer around here, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm just the only problem with Jack is he's done this for like five years over <laughs> and over again, and it's worked every time. And then he he gets all pissy with me and goes, well, I'm just stupid. <laughs> and you know, you know, the best way to not be able to figure out how to use a, a, a technology, and I think you'll all agree with this, give up is to say I'm too stupid to understand it. Yeah, give up, like That's Kevin said. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk yourself out of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I could get you up and running. I think on just about everything, Josh. It's very simple. You know, no, I'm sure I could. Yeah. But I'm not going to put him on Zoom. God knows I've got enough trouble with him on Skype. <laughs> yeah. Suggestion. And by the way, I went to Skype the other day, which I haven't used in. The only time yeah. I use the only time I use so it. so old and antiquated when you use it now. Yeah, well, I use it for, uh, I used it for a while for doing Michael Snyder, but now he's even doing Zoom with me. So I don't, I never used it. So I went to it the other day and it was like I was in another, on another planet. I, yeah, out, uses it. I got to the point where I couldn't figure out anything, you know? So. Yeah. I'll have to, I'm going to be traveling for a couple of weeks during the week, you know, for my work. So I'll have to find a way to talk to my wife every night. You know, I'll probably try to use zoom for that. We both have had Skype, but I mean, I've never, I haven't used it for a long time either. So maybe I'll we'll try this. For just a quick, you know, for a quick video call, uh, FaceTime isn't half bad, but you can't use it on anything else but a Mac, right? You know, they never they never created FaceTime for PCs. Yeah, excuse me, folks. I'm I'm having right. grips, what I call grips here. You can do um, you can do messenger video calls now. Yes, yeah, I did I one the other day. I did uh, I did one with Phil the other yeah. day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can, right? It's just you know, but like the hotel, the computer's easy because you know you can have it plugged in. You don't have to hold it. You know, what I mean, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Computers, computers, yeah. pretty easy because I, you know, I'll be gone for four or five nights a week. So yeah, so, uh, but you know, that's what I was saying. But Kevin, I'm, I'm, I know that Kevin and I still, you know, and, and Patrick on Friday, you know, we, we, we definitely look forward, you know, to the program. I mean. Yeah, I, and just, I, just and like I, we so, do on uh, Saturday, uh, and that's the reason I've kept doing it. Not necessarily just for you guys, with you guys, right. and I can do You've it like this, like you know. Right. Uh, but because uh, there are people who do rely on it, you know, night after night. Right. Um, well, I, I think one, they one, enjoy of, it. one of which is trying to get in now, but I'm not going to put them on. <laughs> uh, 
So, uh, in fact, it, 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 you you can it, you can uh, let me show you something here, uh, Josh. Then you'll you'll have an idea. I'll make you a co-host. Okay, what you can do with uh, with Zoom is make somebody a co-host. Now you can see everybody. Who's yeah. To get on. See who that is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. You would agree. Yes, I not allow him on here with this group. Maybe, maybe not for your uh, your your night off show. Maybe my not, this right. is my night off, right? Show, <laughs> and I don't mind the people who are here right now, uh, especially Mister Letterman podcast. <laughs> God, he's just walking around. Are you are you the, are you by yourself or is your wife with you? No, you know what? Um, Steve O'Donnell took me out for dinner tonight. Candy was supposed to come, but she wasn't feeling very good. By the way. I had brunch with Steve Weiner and his wife today, and they told me to tell you hello. No, yeah, well, of course. So they can call if they want to, you know. But no, nice people. Very nice people. So anyway. Um, it's just bring around tonight. Yeah. So, well, uh, please wish her well for me. Although you got I it. Have we ever seen her on the program at all? Steve and Lori or Candy? No, you mean no. Candy? <laughs> she made a couple little cameos, but no. Yeah. yeah. Mostly just uh, your show is mostly my my lovely little pleasure. I mean, I love that how he's talking about a podcast cameo. That's a, maybe the lowest form of show business, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I can't think anything l lower on the on the scale of importance in broadcasting than the co-host. I'm pretty sure it's I mean, lower that, than no, more excuse me, more. than the uh, than the cameo. Yes, yeah. the podcast. Cameo is very, very low on the totem pole of yeah. show business. Definitely lower than porn for sure. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. I just I was going to stop making a co-host here, but I don't know how to do that. Oh, remove co-host permission. Okay, there we there go. There you go. There you go. And, and there's somebody else. Hot guy in SF. Who would that be? <laughs> I don't. That sounds like you're in the thousands there, Alex. Huh? Hot guy in SF sounds like you in the mid 2000s, I think. Yeah, if hot guy in SF is listening. Put in another name so I can know who you are. Because I, you know, hot guy yeah. in SF. God, you know. Need more information on that one. Yeah, yeah. It's like somebody off Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. That could be, uh, yeah, that could be a sideways one if you. You go to that off off internet. Broadway, yeah. Off Broadway, yeah. In San Francisco, <laughs> off Broadway. Yeah. So you know what I'm getting sick of. And I, I just you know, Marjorie always has MSNBC on. <laughs> yeah. God, I hate that channel. I just have gotten to hate it. And you know, I'm a I'm a right winger. I'm, I'm a real lefty. But I'm sorry. You know, it is it the, up a little bit? Hmm? Is it the same story every single day? You know, Trump. I mean, <laughs> Trump, or now it's now it's uh, what's it? Walker, what's his name? Uh, I keep thinking of Hiram oh, Walker, but that's Herschel, a that's Herschel. a whiskey. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I think Herschel. Hiram Walker, which is he had, a, a, he had a debate today. Yeah. Oh, did they have a debate? Oh. Yeah, they had a debate. Well, I guess they call it that, but. Hmm. Well, isn't it in order to have a debate? Aren't you supposed to be able to put two words together? In yeah, a yeah, I was going to say in a in a debate. I don't think it was like college where he could have someone do his work for him. So I don't know. That was probably difficult for him. Since well, he, no, but he said he went to college and he didn't. Oh, I'm I'm sure he did. No, he didn't. He didn't finish it. Oh, okay. He said he did. Okay, that's what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. Was he, I'm sure that someone who played football in Georgia in the 70s or whatever, I'm sure they were real hard studiers, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think there were too many NCAA rules then. So, I mean, it, I, I'm sure it was, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sure he worked real hard at it. Got a trophy. Yeah. 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 yeah that guy is, uh, he's a low life individual. I, I, I mean, well, I don't, hope, hopefully he doesn't get elected. Well, here, you know, here's we'll here's see. here's something that I I I sent to Phil actually because he thinks he thinks uh, uh, Herschel Walker is okay, you know, and, yeah. and this is from Christian Walker, who's his son, 
And it's one right. of the postings his son has done. His son's been, done quite a few postings. And by the way, his son reputedly is a right winger. Yeah. Okay. All right. He right. writes, I know my mom and I would really appreciate it if my father, Herschel Walker, stopped lying and making a mockery of us. You're not a family, man. When you left us a, to bang a bunch of women, threatened to, <laughs> threatened to kill us and had us move over six times in six months running from your violence. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, I, I don't know people, why. People would even think about voting for a guy like that. Yeah, I don't know why Phil would think, you know, he was uh, OK or whatever. I mean, and he's not here to speak, right. so I'll just focus on what I know. But I mean, look, the evidence is abundant, OK, that Herschel Walker is not a good person. Now, look, I haven't we haven't even really gotten into his politics, OK, because that is sort of separate, but he's not a good person. OK, he's not right. a moral person. Right. He's not a good husband. He's not a good father. He's not a good man. You know, he's obviously a liar. Um, other other things. I mean, the list could go on. So how any sort of true conservative, certainly how any sort of Christian conservative, how they could support those that person is beyond me. Now, I can understand them saying, well, but my other choice is a Democrat. Well, then, no, it's not. Then don't vote for either one of them. Start sending your message. Yeah, I but mean, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. But don't vote. Well, don't right. vote for. Don't vote for Herschel Walker. Right. I mean, it, 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 all I'm saying is, if you're a Christian, how can you vote for for Walker with his past? Okay. Right. I mean, I often wondered how a Christian, a good Christian, uh, and this is a Jew trying to tell a good Christian what they should do, <laughs> but how a good Christian could possibly vote for Donald Trump after those remarks about you can pat, pat a woman on her pussy. Yeah. yeah, that's just one of the many things. I mean, I, I, I've said, I've told you before that I, I sat in, a, in a, a, a fundamentalist church once uh, that was a denomination, was a Church of Christ and Christian Union. So it's a, a you know, a pretty large church, pretty well known. It's tied yeah. in with, you know, the, like the Nazarenes and all those. Yeah. And, and a minister telling us that, you know, how Bill Clinton could be the president of the United States was beyond him because a man who cannot be trusted to make good decisions in his personal life cannot be trusted to be president of the United States. And I haven't spoken to that minister for quite some time, but I can guarantee you, I'm, I'm telling you, I would bet whatever you wanted that he voted for Donald Trump. I guarantee you that he did. Yeah. I, I, and I cannot equate those two things, you know, to the same. The, what what you told me many years ago, Pastor, was this. And I know that you defied that later in the name of abortion for Trump or whatever. You traded your morals to get what you wanted. And that right. is not right in, yeah. in, no, in many terrible. ways. But it is certainly not right for the religion that you proclaim which I was fairly well schooled in. I'm telling you, it's not. And that's what aggravates me about the, those folks. You know, I, it, it's, I mean, hypocrisy is not even the right word for it. It's just wrong. I mean, you know, so yeah, the Herschel Walker guy, I mean, he's a, he's a piece of shit, right? I mean, uh, hold on one second. A Mr. Letterman podcast, because I always forget names when they're not written down there. You know, My name's Mike, Alex. I know it's Mike. But anyway, All right. Mike Chisholm. Hi, buddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, where are you right now? Uh, I'm on West 79th Street. Now, in back of you is what we have all around our building where we live. And that's a very common site is that scaffolding. Scaffolding. Yeah. There's lots yeah. of work going on around here right now. Oh, New York. I've often said New York is a city that's always on under construction. <laughs> you know? They're, oh, yeah. they're always building something. So what street are you on now? West 79th and I think still Columbus, I think. West 79th and still Columbus? But you were on Yeah, 79th. I'm making my way down towards Times Square, I think. My oh, hotel's on West 49th. Oh, okay. All right. So you're you're doing a nice walk. That's a good walk. 
Well, I'm walking yeah. off the booze that Steve O'Donnell inserted into me tonight, and that's what <laughs> oh, I. Oh yeah, blame it on on Steve O'Donnell. You know. He served me wine, and then we went to a restaurant, and they served me more wine, Alex. That's what just happened. <laughs> oh, is, oh, is that your excuse? It's the, not an excuse. The, the, it's, the a, Lord, it's a very. Why don't, you fair... try this, why don't you try this one? The Lord made me do it. Very no, good. no, no. Well, I don't want to call Steve O'Donnell the Lord, but he was David Letterman's head writer for a number of years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Mm. Uh, although I will call him Lord tomorrow, and I'm sure he'll appreciate that very much. Oh, okay. So how long are you in New York for? We're here till Tuesday, sir. I hope to meet with you and Shecky and Len on Monday, if possible. Uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Len, Len, because it's Len's idea, you know. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I hear you. Yeah, but well, well, we might be able to. I mean, whatever, you know, we'll figure. No it out. worries either way, and there's no pressure. Yeah. Rupert's also taking me out for dinner as well on Monday night. So, uh, Rupert, the sole sponsor of my podcast is Rupert G of the Hello Deli. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. At least you got a sponsor. I think maybe you're not a not a hobby anymore. Oh, uh, let's not go that far. But uh, I'm so having Rupert, fun either way. Rupert G is taking you out to dinner, but he's probably just going to serve you a hot dog at the Hello Deli. <laughs> no, he turns out he's a foodie and he knows New York restaurants quite well. And apparently he has a nice place to take candy and I, too. No, oh, OK. OK. There's a lot of good restaurants in this town. A lot of good eating. Yes, sir. You know? Yes, but, sir. I don't know who this hot guy in San Francisco was, but if <laughs> if he had put his real name down there. I probably would have put him on, yeah. but I'm letting you guys vote on anybody we put on here. <laughs> did you vote on me? Yes, we did. And thanks I thanks very much, I, everybody. I, I appreciate it. I said you were you were a, a good guy, and that you'd be terrific. You know, and you well, are. Well, let's not know. go that far, but he's, I appreciate. It. He's not interruptive, you know. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it. Well, all the people who call that Monday show are nice people. Yeah. They're I'm really trying, nice. I'm trying to get Steve Weiner in on that because yeah. he's a nice guy. Oh, no, he's evil. <laughs> Steve Weiner's an old friend of mine who, uh, God, I go go back as far as Shecky, back before Shecky. I knew him before Shecky. Yep. I was. He uh, got he, Shecky the job at the Letterman show. Yeah. But I mean, he, Steve Weiner. The way I got to meet my Shecky, who's probably my best friend in the whole world now, mainly not only because he is, would be my best friend too, but all the others have died. Okay. Uh, and, and so we're doing everything we can to keep Shecky alive. So I still have one good friend uh, and, and uh, one best friend. And he, um, uh, Weiner made me was, I was a gift to Shecky. <laughs> A birthday because, gift. Because Shecky always wanted to meet me. And so on his birthday, Weiner, maybe go out to, I went out to dinner with Weiner and he brought along Shecky and I was his present, his birthday present. <laughs> That's and adorable. Since, since then, we've been friends. And I think it, we, we said it's over 40 years now. What? Long time, long time. Although, you know, it, it's strange. I talk about how I don't have, uh, friends, you know, I only have one best friend. And then I think about it, and you know, guys like you, Josh, and and Kevin, you've become very good friends. You know, and you've been a good friends to me. I mean, like today, you kind of got me out of my doldrums and said, "Come on, let's do a thing." You know, um, so I, I, you know, I, I guess I feel the best friends are people you see physically. You know, and and right. you know. I know you guys pretty well now, after all. How many years have we been doing this? Well, it was a time when you weren't, you weren't talking to me, Josh, but that's another story, you know. Well, it's called life, but, yeah. you know, uh, a couple of years, you know. Uh, Patrick and I really, uh, for a long time, uh, he and I used to talk a lot. And then uh, David uh, Hayek, you know, uh, from Czechoslovakia there would uh, – uh, he, he used to join in here and there for a while when he was mm -hmm. kind of hanging out, you know, then he disappeared. Do you hear from but, him uh, at all any longer? No, I have not for a long time. No. Okay. Um, so that, that's been, gosh, probably going back, what, at least seven, eight years, maybe. Maybe longer. Yeah, I would think. 
Well, we've been doing this show for, or we've been doing the Ramble, not this show, but the Rambles mm-hmm. for eight years. Yeah. Yes, it was a little bit after that. So, I mean, you know, I think so. I mean, because uh, that's when Patrick uh, started calling your show. I mean, he called your series show before, but not to where anybody really. Well, he actually contact. called me back. I was watching an old show that we did from the TV studio where we yeah, first I think did our show. That. As a, it was a real good looking TV show, actually. Yeah, I used uh, to get. You know, and um, he, uh, Patrick called that. So yeah. Patrick yes. goes back to that, too. Yeah. Yeah. And he called the radio program. I used to call the radio program from uh, uh, time to time, um, you know, w- whenever. Uh, yeah, that uh, he called that, too. So I'd known who he was for a long time. But so, yeah, we've probably been talking like that for. Yeah, at least six or seven years. I don't when know. When did you first start calling, Kevin? Uh, just before, probably 2014, 15. I didn't call you when you were on Sirius because it was always when I was working. Mm-hmm. But I listened. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't much because I was always going to work and just getting to work. Um, yeah. You were in that, I think you were in the seven o'clock out here. Now, did you listen to me when I was on the air in San Francisco, too? San Francisco is every day. Oh, okay. All right. You're in the six, you know, you're in the five, six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't don't push it. Six o'clock. Actually, with me, it was 610. I did not arrive till 610. Right, right. But they we did used to load they, our trucks and listen to you, play you in the uh, warehouse full blast. They did a little bit of news, and then they would put on records. Yep. yep. And, and, and I would yep. get there between... 10 minutes after six and yep. six fifteen. Yep. And then I cranked the mic open and on we went with the show. Yep. But and I didn't I, want to have to I get there. To break one... away so many times. I want to take the San Francisco route and bust off it and go, you know, go by the studio or whatever and cheat a little bit, but I never could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 people always say, Oh, that was so great. Too bad. You can't, why don't you come back to San Francisco and do that again? And I keep saying, you know, the one thing we could definitely not do if I came back to San Francisco, number one is have a younger man doing the show. But other than that, uh, if I came back was to have a studio audience because no radio station would allow the public to right. walk into their studio. Right. You know, we didn't even have totally a guard. We, we didn't even have a guard. <laughs> we had a guy named Curtis Martini who if somebody yeah. wanted to jump him, he was a goner. Was, okay, was, but he... Back nice. then, it was like opening up the uh, the comedy store or or the bar early in the morning. Is basically what it was. Yeah, yeah. And you opened up a show early in the morning, and whoever was there was there. Yeah, yeah. but we what I'm saying, saying is, if I did it today, we couldn't let people just walk into the studio. No, they all yeah. just walk right in, and you'd stuff as many people yeah. as you could in there, and you'd also have- Live 105 built a studio where I could have an audience. Right. Mm-hmm. And and what it was is it was the studio, which was not that large, but we could fit about 20 people in the studio. Yeah. But then we could open up this window. And then there was seating outside the window for about another 50 people. So when you heard a huge amount of applause one morning, it's because we got a yeah. large crowd, you know. Hmm. And one time we did a show, one morning we did a show and we had on the same show, Jackie Chan. And Tori Amos, both very popular in their own fields. All right. Mm-hmm. And so I uh I I went uh, so we had them on. The line literally went all the way around the block to get into yeah. the studio. Nobody was gonna get in who wasn't already there, but, but they man, they would. showed up anyway. You know, who were they there to see more of? Tori or Jackie? Me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it was about equal, actually. I knew all the women in the audience were there for Tori. And and all the guys there were for the action star, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, yeah, the star studded show that morning. Yeah. Wow. But you yeah, had a lot of good interviews back then. You had a lot of good interviews. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, we had a lot of good people who did that show. It was, it, it was an important stop for most people who had something to promote. Christy and Lori and all those people there, they were great. Yep, yep. 
So, you know, I'm, I, I, I think back on that. That was my, people say, what was your greatest success in the business? And I'd have to say it was that San Francisco show. Yeah. Even though I was very popular here in New York, but it wasn't the same kind of success. You know, that was true success. You know, I had businesses going, I had comedy shows I was doing, everything, you know. Yeah. I was yeah, the, uh, hmm? yeah, the deal with all the talking, you know, I, I don't know, really remember how all that started. I, I, I think that, you know, I used to just message with Patrick here and there because from the show and at one time one of us must have messaged each other, you know, hey, hello, you know, I like your viewpoints or what, you know, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And then probably, you know, just went on a little bit. And I think maybe one time I just said, hey, you want to, you know, bullshit one Saturday night or something like that. And just kind of got started from there. I just like, just like we do Saturday, you know, tomorrow. I just lean back in the chair. Everybody has something to drink. We just talk about whatever, you know. <laughs> oh, Mike, I got an idea. Why don't you uh, turn, why don't you reverse your camera or turn the, you turn it so that the front camera is working. Yeah, and we can see a little, people can see a little bit of New York. New York, sure. And then if you want to talk, turn it around. Why also yeah. turn your turn your camera sideways? Let's see what happens here. It should. There we go. Oh, there we go. Now that you see is a panoramic view. Yeah. Okay. New York City. Let's and see who New York City. First defecation on the street. Yeah, we're waiting. We're in case you just tuned into this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're waiting for. Mike Chisholm to get mugged. So uh you almost got hit right there. That's you know, the first I think what you should have done if you really wanted to see if you if you what the real New York experience, you should have put on a MAGA hat uh, in, in New York City. If you wore a MAGA hat in New York City, I don't think you would make make it to the end of that block. <laughs> right I don't there? think that would be very good for the Letterman podcast, Alex. No, it wouldn't. I'm trying to build a brand here, buddy. Might huh? be good for GabNet, though. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. To step in front of one of those yellow cars. Yeah. <laughs> well, those are yellow. You know, you know something? Those yellow cabs, what they've done with the yellow cabs now? They also can be Ubers. Mm. Oh, really? Yes, which Double is a up. real problem because you thought there was trouble hailing a cab before. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Try it when they're Ubers and they are rushing to go take an Uber ride. Yeah. yeah. So they're not as available as they once were. I mean, I use right, Lyft. Right. I use Lyft all the time. What? <laughs> yeah, because I imagine that because they're Ubers, they're they're independent and they get more money probably. Well, I mean, they're they're cab drivers. Okay? Yeah. They're cabs. They have the they have a licensed medallion. By the way, those medallions, it's a it's a thing that's on the hood of the car. Sure. And it, it makes them officially a New York taxi. Those things were being sold and auctioned off. And um, they sold sometimes for as much as, and people could buy them for this, $2 million. Ray Romano, do you, if not Ray Romano, Ray Renati, you want to, Ray's okay, right? Hey, might as well get some people on, I guess. Yeah, well, no, Ray, Ray's okay. Ray's all get right. people talking. Yeah. No, Ray's okay. Ray's not a not a pain in the ass, you know. Um, here we go. He's probably walking down the street somewhere. Hello, Ray. Yeah. Sorry. Are, are you eating? Oh yeah. Well, I just had a piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, uh, why don't you turn your camera on, Ray? Oh, uh, oh, I have the OBS. I got to turn my OBS off. Oh, oh, I see. Because it's it won't run the two at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I, my my computer will do it, but I don't know. Maybe I just don't have the settings right. I've never tried it. Anyway, uh, yeah. Let's let's see. I want to see. Are you at home? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, oh, there's a there's a nice walk down the street, and um, there's a subway. There's a subway. Yeah. Who's that. Huh? Who is that? A good is place it? to get mugged. It's a good place to get mugged too. Are you are you there, Ray? Where's the picture? Oh, oh there. I don't know. It went away. I got it now. There, there we that. go. There's Ray. 
original sound off. There. Anyways, I'm not doing my regular show tonight. You know. Oh, oh, I didn't know. No, this is not the ramble. No, oh. I, I, I kind of gave that up uh, the last two nights. You know. Oh, okay. Because I just, you know, and uh, my good friends Josh and Kevin implored me, why don't you go on with something? So we were uh, going out over Facebook. Oh, okay. And um, uh, and I'm, you know, no, there's uh, I could. Oh, look, Lincoln Center, culture. There's that's Lincoln Center, ladies and gentlemen. See, boy, how you know? steps. huh? With the light up steps. Oh yeah, that's that's a great place. They just reopened part of it, uh, and it's the uh, I'm trying to remember, remember who put all the money in it. Uh, oh, what's his name? Geffen. I think Geffen uh, put a, million, a couple million dollars into restoring one of the buildings or whatever. And uh, he adds more than a million. And uh, they just reopened the, 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 the literally the, where, the, uh, where the Philharmonic plays. Because what they did, well, they built this, this um, auditorium for the Philharmonic and the acoustics were terrible. They were so bad that one musician could not hear another musician playing. Mm -hmm. So they had to redo that, and Geffen put out the money to do it. And supposedly now the acoustics are just phew, terrific. Okay. So much so Marjorie and I want to go and go just, you know, see a concert. You know. Um, I want to ask you, though, what was it? There was about some, oh, yeah. Do you think maybe finally Trump's Goose is cooked. Well, well you know, it, it's cooked, but it, it's just going to get poached. That's all. <laughs> it's going to get poached. <laughs> just going to get you know boiled, and then he'll climb out of the pot, and everything will be fine. And we'll have a night. We have a nice uh, like sauce on it or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. You know, because you, get shit. you know what I you know what I hated. He said something to the effect of. Um, the Supreme Court, uh, I can't trust them anymore. They're not. Wow. They're not in my in my. You know, and I'm going. That wasn't what they're supposed to do. No. Right. You know. Oh no, they're not loyal to me. That was what he said. They're not supposed to be. That, that's not okay. their job to be loyal to anybody. Yeah. The uh, the writing on top of the entrance at the top of the steps says "Equal Justice Under Law." doesn't Correct. say anything about trump yeah yeah well trump thinks it does or by he probably does deals. and and it's funny because the guy who uh, started the refusal of take to take his case okay was what's his name um you know uh oh, oh yeah yeah if it came from that district it's probably clarence thomas right? clarence because thomas he but then that, he uh, went to the other judges and they had to pass on whether they wanted to take the case or not and they all reject every one of them rejected it. Yeah, so I guess I mean, not, you know, yeah, they're not loyal to him anymore. That's 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 because that's what everybody wants is a ticking time bomb, you know, shit sandwich handed right to him, right? You know. Well, I <laughs> said to Marjorie. Marjorie said, "Oh, they're going to let him, you know, do this, blah 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 blah." And I said, "No, yeah. they're going to they're going to refuse to take the case." And she said, "Well, why?" And I said, "They don't want that hot potato." Yeah, why would you when you could just go on and do your other work? God right? knows the Supreme Court has had a bad enough reputation after Roe v. Wade that it doesn't want to go through this with Trump. Yeah, they they yeah, they don't need it and they don't want it. And, and it's in and I honestly think that it, more than that, they don't see it as a legitimate case for them to be getting involved in. It's a pretty fairly cut and dry thing you know i mean it's it's yeah. he's losing and he should be yeah. and i think they look at it and they they say we're not taking it not only because we don't want this handed to us but there's no legal basis for us here to to do it i mean there's there's nothing there right you know and i like that it looks to be it appears to be unanimous you know there i there was no noted dissents that i you know saw mm -hmm. um no one came out and said Oh, I can't believe five of us wouldn't hear this. This is an outrage. No one bothered to, you know, no one did any of that, you know, and it's supposed to be, you know, it's his court and all that. Well, he's finding out, you know, this isn't 
business where you put a manager in place and they then don't want that they don't want that hot potato anymore and i think he's i think he's on his way to having some real troubles yeah and i i think that if other acts aspects of his legal troubles end up in front of them you're going to see the same results either by, they but, help or it'll go and it won't go his way if they do step in by the way they subpoenaed him okay uh yeah Congress, Ray, quit yeah. playing with your picture I can't get it to work. Well, there. just leave it there. Boom. And they're all red. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Because it becomes disconcerting when you're doing all of that, you know. Yeah, I think they'll... Uh, yeah, Congress is subpoenaing him now. And, you know, I was kind of thinking about that a little bit. I, well, did you see what he did? I, he wrote a 14-page reply, but it wasn't saying he was going to do it or not do it. Yeah. Uh, and I... I don't know how he can get himself out of that. Uh, he mm -hmm. really can't. Now, I, I mean, I suppose he could not show up and refuse and drag it out for forever. I, I mean, and that's what he'll do, you know. I mean, I do think the chances of him actually sitting down and testifying to them are pretty slim. I mean, you know, what he'll basically do is nothing, and then he'll just bank on the fact that in – another couple of weeks his his party will take the majority and they'll just nix that committee. i don't think that's looking that right. good though either. i would agree but i'm that's i'm sure that's his line of thinking right you know is in a few minutes his people will be back in charge and they'll take care of him you know they'll give him i, I think you're going to find that all these republicans who have relied on who is april lee well if it's a woman it would be nice to have a woman in this mix wouldn't it it won't hurt. Oh, now she went away. Okay. Well, anyway, um, uh, what I was going to say is, is that all these people have relied on going with the big lie yep. and backing Trump may find it's going to blow up in their faces. I think over time it will. This particular midterm cycle, it, it might not, but I do think long term, you know, five, six, seven years from now, I think a lot of these people are going to find out that it was a mistake. Because it is wearing on people already, and I think it will continue to. And look, it's an abandonment of conservatism. Um, you know, I think they've been out and out shown to be liars. You know, uh, I think it's funny that, you know, uh, uh, you know, many of them, Steve Scalise and others said, you know, well, holy, I can't serve on the January 6th committee. It, it, it won't ask the tough questions. It, it won't haul Nancy Pelosi before it and ask her why she didn't call the National Guard. They it won't have the balls to ask that question. And then here we find out they knew that she called the National Guard because they were standing right fucking next to her when she did. By the way, you did know? you see who took all that video? Uh, Alexandra Pelosi, right? her yeah. daughter. And it's, yeah. it, it, so, it, I, I think it's going to be on HBO because they've been crediting it to Alexandra Pelosi slash HBO. I'm sure it will. To make me believe that it's going to be an HBO documentary about what went on in that room. And there was some amazing stuff. And one of the things she said was, if he were here, if Trump were here right now, I'd punch him right in the face. She said, <laughs> yeah. I don't care what would happen to me. You yeah. Know? She yeah. Says, so, <laughs> so they've been proven to be liars many of them um they you know proven to uh mislead people and and then to just say things to play the game to put on the circus the show mm -hmm. you know i mean how can you trust people like that or or want people like that to make important decisions like war and peace and and social security and education i mean it's a fucking it's a joke i don't even care about some of these people's policy positions even though I don't happen to agree with them. I mean, these. I've, this is what I say over and over and over again. These policy positions, some of them I don't agree with, but it is at least legitimate. Hey, mm -hmm. I think Social Security doesn't work and we should privatize it. Hey, I think we shouldn't. Those are two people agreeing that there's a problem and two different ways to fix it. That is fine. That is politics. <laughs> that is the America. But this other stuff is garbage. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just... It's completely out of what out of our planetary system. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a, yeah. it's a nonsense. Yeah, you know, it's all for show. It's all to keep power and and to make money. I mean, that's that's really all that it is. 
I mean, you know, I mean, you know, Steve Scalise and all the rest of the Republican leadership, and they should be ashamed of themselves. I mean, you know, what they said was a lie. It wasn't true. The, the Democratic leaders were standing in a room saying, send someone down here, you know, and, and Steve Scalise and all the rest of them were in there, the chicken shit motherfuckers. They wouldn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, you know, a fucking bunch of cowardly men in there. I'm scared to death, you know, you know, of the fire that they lit. Was he the one that was running? No, uh, you know, uh, gets, I don't know. Gets or uh, the other guy, what is his name? The the guy that was talking about all the the uh, Gets was running. And it was the other guy. What the hell's his name? The one yeah, the, the, one of them was running, literally running. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I see with with this Herschel Walker thing. You see Tom Scott standing behind. Is it Tom Scott or the other guy? Uh, Rick Rick Scott. Tim Scott. Rick is it is Rick Scott, right? Rick Scott standing behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like his little toy, and he's standing behind Herschel going, okay, say this, Herschel, say that, Herschel. And it, it's like they continued, continue to just, you know, manufacture these these other guys in in the in the name of conservatives that's just a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. And, and, and it just irritates me because they keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And eventually they're gonna run out of they're gonna run out of stock. You know, that's what I see. Let me see here. I want to find out where Mike, where are you right now? It's like he's getting closer to Times Square. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Where are you right now? Well, I'm almost at uh, Mecca. If you're a Letterman fan, I'm about to hit West 53rd Street. Oh, and I got to pick the right direction and I'll be passing by the Ed Sullivan Theater where I sit on the stage last night. Where you what? I stood on the stage last night. Hey, I'm talking here. I'm talking here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Rude yeah, you sat on the stage of the Cold Bear show. How disgusting is that? <laughs> yeah, well, I had to do it, man, because I the last time I was there, I stood on the stage of the Letterman show. Now, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going the right way. Excuse me. Is 8th that way? Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. I'm going the right way. So yeah, I had to, I had to sit behind well, the desk. By the way, see that because... thing on the left? Those are those places where they've they've made little places for people to eat, and they just <laughs> take up all the parking places on a block in New York City. It's really horrible. It's just terrible. Some of them call, are adorable. I call them rat hutches. <laughs> That's a good name for it. Yeah, well, the, I'll tell you what you're doing with your camera and taking just taking people through New York. That's New York, folks. That's really what New York's like. Yeah, man. You know? I'm having a blast here. I'm having so much fun. Yeah. So you're going down towards... Uh... My hotel is right near Times Square. Candy mm -hmm. and I decided to stay in Midtown as opposed to the village, even though I like the village better, but, you know, the wife always wins. And we're seeing two Broadway shows while we're here. Which and with all the Letterman you... stuff I have doing, you know, I had to relent on something, so... Um, so Times Square it is. Yeah. So so uh, uh, what shows are you going to go see? We saw the Book of Mormon already, which was a triumph. I loved it. So Great much. show. Great show. Yeah. Yeah. And on Sunday we're going to see Funny Girl for the matinee. Oh. Okay. It, it now is starring who? Who is it? Uh... The Glee gal. I forget her name. Anna yeah. something maybe. I can't remember now. But they 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 had the girl who played. Uh, um uh, monica lewinsky on television was playing fanny bryce before and oh. she left the show so oh yeah well apparently this version of funny girl is a triumph and i'm very excited to see it yeah, it's Sunday. supposed to be very good it's supposed to be a good show you know yeah. well it's a re you know it's a redo of an old show book of mormon i loved it was terrific oh it's so good so 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 good yeah Anyway, so <laughs> listen, we're kind. Of, I'm kind. Of, my voice is starting. Does my voice sound okay? Yeah. Is it all right? Okay. Uh, and it's starting to go a little bit, and I'm getting a little tired. And uh, I really, it's been really nice. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. You know, this is the way. It Thank should you for accompanying me on my walk, everybody. Alex, well, I hope it, to see well, you on Monday. Well, I was right when I said you you were a good guy and you wouldn't be annoying and all of that. And uh, I think he's done a really nice job of just giving us some graphics we wouldn't ordinarily have. 
Thank you, my friend. I appreciate everything that you do very, very much. And your top, your name came up a lot with uh, with Stephen Laurie today, and it was mostly affectionate. So thank you for being you. Most of it was affectionate. I mean, they had something nasty to say about me. Like ninety five percent of it was uh, was like, so and the affectionate. The other five percent was what a douchebag, right? No, no, no. There was none of that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Good night, everybody. Peace and love. I will see you later. And um, as long as I've still got you guys, any last things you want to talk about, Josh? Anything this week that really got you pissed off? Uh, not that I know of. I mean, you know, the Trump stuff was interesting. Uh, I thought the Alex Jones thing was. was oh, the pretty, Alex Jones thing. We forgot that. Yeah. You know, he'll. Uh, he'll we'll never see what happens penny. there. He'll never pay a penny of it. Yeah, probably not. Um I, I'm sure that if they take that to an appeals know. court, I think an appeals court will say that's a little excessive. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think either way he's going to end up. Uh, look, I hope he has assets seized and auctioned off, and I mean, you know, that's what he deserves. That's what the judgment is. And the other, you know, the other night, uh, the other night, uh, Phil, in being one of in one of his more ridiculous moments, said, "Well, doesn't there isn't there freedom of speech?" And I said, well, there is. this isn't freedom of speech. This wasn't a criminal trial. This was a civil mm -hmm. trial. Correct. He was being sued by people yeah. for doing stuff which made their lives miserable. Yeah, I mean, there is. And the, and the important thing to remember about this is, uh, even if you think that it was taken away, it's not as if it was just unilaterally removed by a person or, or the government. It was adjudicated through a process and a jury of Americans decided that, you know, the speech that he did was not free, that it was outside the bounds of what we consider free speech. Because we all know that free speech isn't unlimited, okay? But at least in this case, not, not some person handed down an order and said, well, that was out of bounds. You can't say that. It went through a process, right? Well, they were yeah. suing him you know? for damages. They weren't charging him with anything. They were suing him for damages. If they were charging him criminally, he'd probably be in jail right now. But it was yeah. excessively slanderous, was it not? Correct. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to remember if it's, I think it is slander. What happened was, what the he case they were making was. He to go he, piss on the kid's freaking grave yeah he's they said that because of what he did by calling it a lie and all of that their lives were made miserable by his viewers and his listeners and his yeah. men and that in one case this one father talked about his son's grave being urinated on by a jones follower and a lady getting hassled in the grocery store and yeah and they these lies, these yeah, these, these are people, people saying had, uh, that under normal conditions, being hassled in a grocery store wouldn't amount to much. But in this case, this right. somebody lost their child. Yeah, okay. I, I know. I could. I, I'd have. I'd have. I don't know what I would have done, but I mm -hmm. wouldn't have been probably talking to you right now. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. We'd be having to bail you out of jail. If well, was, they have. You know, I think they had. You know, multiple over and over again cases of like trespassers on their property and you know uh, uh real harassment i mean you know harassment is against the law i mean you right. know i mean i can't follow you around every fucking where you go and yell at you 24 hours a day so i mean that's there's well, laws not against that that. it's not and right again it was because someone <laughs> sat there and told them to do it like someone else we know told right. ten thousand yeah. people to go into the capitol yeah, I mean, there is certainly freedom of speech in this country. There is certainly First Amendment protection, yeah. but, but there has always been limitation, and there there always I will could. be limitation. I mean, did our framers not pass the Alien and Sedition Act? Right. You know, I, I mean, f f just a few years after our new government was formed in John Adams' second term, I understand that it went too far and it was repealed and all that, rightly so. But mm -hmm. my point is. Even those framers had in their mind, we have, we have to have limits on, on speech, right? People can say things and do damage, kill people, get people hurt, well, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. even the framers had in their mind that there were going to be limitations. They did pass the act, 
John right. Adams did sign it. I mean, you know, these were the people that wrote the Constitution or that voted to ratify it or that served in the first original government, the first few years. They passed laws against free speech, limiting it, you know, uh, paring it down. Uh, yeah, they went too far, but I mean, you know, but look, if they could do it, that's proof enough that free speech was not then and is not now, was never meant to be 100% completely unlimited. That's never been the case, you know. You can't, you can't cause a panic, right? You know, I mean, you can't, you can't go to a ball game and get on a bullhorn. Well, it, 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 you know? it, 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 in this say there's a bomb, case, everybody run. I mean, you can't in this do case, it. You had to prove damages, and they proved right. damages. Yeah, they did. Now, I mean, granted, you know, I don't think that the eventual outlay. Now, I'll tell you. Let's talk about another case. I was going to say the eventual uh, amount of money that he's going to owe is going to be that much, that as much as that. Right. Uh, it could be several hundred million dollars, but I, I don't think it'd be right. close to a billion. The yeah. other case, what do you think about what happened down in Florida? Now, I'm against the death penalty, so I'm glad the guy didn't get the death penalty for the uh, uh, yeah. Parkland uh, right. massacre. Right. They sentenced him, him to life in prison. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm OK with that because that's what the. You know, that's what the jury decided. Right. You know, so I I can accept that because the facts were presented in front of. They, they say he had fetal know. alcohol syndrome when he was born. Well, it's possible. I, I mean, look, I, I think it's fair enough to argue that anyone who is uh, willing to randomly kill people, you know, it, it has a mental defect. Right. But, I know, mean, it's, 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 I mean, trying, to, trying to have a hearing in which you say, now this guy killed 10 people. Uh, yeah. Now we want to prove to you that he's sane. Yeah. Uh, well, right. I mean, if that's a sane act, then. Yeah. Uh, right. It, it, I mean, it, it, because it was like, you know, uh, random. I mean, to me, I, I don't know that he had any sort of, you know, relationship with these people where they had harmed him. It wasn't. Pay I mean, it was just. You know, he just killed people, you know, I mean, so yeah. I'm, but, I, I mean, the thing that, is that the, the parents were upset because he didn't get the death penalty. And my argument back to them was if this had happened in a state without the death penalty and the best penalty you could get was life in prison, you yeah. wouldn't be sitting here feeling bad about it. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, and and, and they are entitled to their uh, thoughts on that for sure. And because and they are the victims of the of the crime. But, you know, the, the media sort of made it sound like they were all outraged. But, you know, the Washington Post ran an article yesterday that mentioned a couple of family members who didn't want him to have. Well, him. actually, let, let, me so, this, you know, let me just say this, let me say this, that there is known that when you don't execute the person and it doesn't go through that process, these yeah. families today. Yeah, have a certain amount of relief from the whole thing. In other well, words, it's over, right? It's, it's over, over with, right? And they can get yeah. on with their lives. I mean, Whereas if they gave them the death penalty, it wouldn't be over. It wouldn't be over until they executed them, which might be yeah. 10 years from now. Correct. Yeah. So it's better that for their resolution mm -hmm. of the situation that it came out the way it did. It was right. better for the families. It was better for the memory of the kids. And killing this guy for 10 people, I mean, is that going to bring them back to life? No. Yeah. And I mean, if and if the families feel like his execution would bring them some peace or whatever, I mean, like I said, they are entitled to that. I I can understand, you know, that. But as a society, we have to make those decisions as a group. And in this case, you know, that group decided that that wasn't to punish. So, yeah. you know, I think I'm good with it either way. I mean. Certainly, if they had said they were going to execute him, I I, I wasn't going to shed tears over it, right? You know, I mean, right? Uh, you know, I, I certainly wa I wasn't going to go protest or anything. And I can understand people who are against death penalty and why, and I'm I, I I'm okay with that. But you know, but I think what they decided was was okay because it's what they it's what they wanted. It's how they chose to handle the situation in their state. You know, they exercised their rights. I mean, 
you might not have got the result that you wanted, but justice was done. You know, I mean, he's not going home and having a beer tonight. I mean, exactly. he's in prison for the rest of his life. He can't yeah. hurt anyone else. Well, listen, let me bring this to a close because uh, I've got 10 minutes till Jack's show and I expect I'll get a call any minute now <laughs> wanting me to solve. A, you know, he called me once when I was on the air to solve a problem. <laughs> well, this will give you time to get him, but maybe he'll get going early. They can get a few extra bonuses. I, I just won't answer the phone tonight. You know, you, you outsource it. Uh, out, get like one of your Indian friends or something to outsource it, you know, and yeah, exactly. and, you know, have you tried starting your computer? Well, you know? I hope everybody is kind of has watched this has enjoyed it. And um, uh, it'll probably get more viewers than I get on all my other stuff. So, you know, what the hell, you know? So uh, thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. And, and Kevin, for both of you guilting me into doing this. It was it was good for me, you know, and I feel I'm not exhausted from it. And uh, I could go on for probably another couple of hours here, but we haven't we can't do that. I got to get to bed. Well, that was the objective was to get you back into. Huh? That was the objective is get you back in the groove. Yeah. Well, you know, then I got to go back and do the ramble or help you. Whole different oh, animal. Yeah. Monday, I get to do the Monday show. You'll be good. fine. Yeah. Anyway, let me say goodbye to you and thank you very much for being part of this. I really appreciate it. You make me feel better. And uh, you're very good friends to the me and to the shows that I do. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no goodbye. problem at all. Okay. Good night to you and good night to everybody who's watching right now. Bye-bye. Have a good week. See you later.